I'm Waylee and Dane, co-founder and chief strategy officer at Sackbox. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of Kubernetes networking. Now, Kubernetes cl cluster networking can get pretty complicated, even if you're very familiar with virtual networking and request routing. So I'm going to start with an introduction using an example of a request made to a service running in a Kubernetes cluster. And so let's say you're a person you know, browsing the web, you, you click on a link, um, and you know, something happens, a page loads, and you know, that is successful. Let's zoom in on what's going on in the middle here. And if we zoom in, the request gets routed through the internet uh, you know, to a cloud provider, let's say. Um, and if we zoom in on that setup, you, know, you have a Kubernetes cluster running uh, on, say, you know, EKS or GKE or AKS. And you have a load balancer that's fronting a service. Uh, that's you know routing requests to the individual uh, backend pods, uh, uh, you know that make up a replica set. And if you look at the cluster and, and you look at consider the network model, um, there's going to be you know, uh, separate networks at the cluster level, node level, and um, at the service level. And every service is going to have a separate virtual IP address. Um, assigned to it, and so uh, requests made to that virtual IP address are going to be routed to uh, the pods uh, uh, that make, uh, behind it or that make it up. Um, and so, if we look at and zoom in at the load balancer, um, you know, Kubernetes offers you know multiple ways to expose um, a service. And so, for consider consideration here, we'll just say that you know cloud providers offer many different types uh, or classes of load balancers with varying options and, and characteristics. And so uh, when the request um, hits the service, it gets routed to the replica set. But let's take a closer look at what's going on at the level of an individual node. And if you look at the node, every Kubernetes worker node has a number of components um, that include the kubelet, um, container runtime. But the most critical one that we're going to focus on here today is uh, called kubeproxy. And what kubeproxy does is uh, it manages uh, and forwards uh, requests uh, that are addressed to those virtual IP addresses for those services to the indi individual backend pods. And there are three modes that kubeproxy uses um, or can use, which I'll highlight here. So the first is uh, user space. And it gets this name uh, because uh, routing happen service routing happens in the user process space uh, rather than the uh, kernel network stack. Um, and this is uh, actually uncommon and, and somewhat slow and outdated. Um, the, the second mode is uh, IP tables mode. And IP tables mode um, configures uh, you know, uh, Linux kernel net filter rules uh, to, to handle all service routing. And this is actually the most uh, common uh, mode used in most implementations of kubeproxy across uh, Kubernetes platforms. Um, and then the last option is uh, something called uh, IPVS. And here, uh, there's, uh, this implements uh, layer 4 load balancing in the Linux kernel uh, using multiple different algorithms. And uh, this went GA in uh, Kubernetes uh, 1.11. Uh, it's a reference. Uh, but it's actually still not as widely supported across Kubernetes networking projects as uh, the IP, IP tables mode. Um, now, it's also worth noting that uh, you know, dynamically assigned ports um, on the node network make it possible for multiple Kubernetes services hosted in the same cluster uh, to use the same internet facing endpoint, um, a port in their endpoints. Uh, now I also want to talk a little bit about the pod network model. And so in the Kubernetes network model, um, every pod uh, is able to directly address each other um, regardless of what host that they're running on. And a couple considerations here. You want to ensure uh, that you're using a CNI implementation that supports the network policy API. Uh, and this will allow you uh, to use capabilities such as network policies to restrict pod to pod traffic. Generally also, pods do not need to be on the host network, but uh, if for some reason uh, they are, you want to ensure that they do not run with um, the uh, net admin capability 
because that's going to give the pod the ability to uh, read and modify the node's firewall rules. Um, a couple last things uh, I just want to highlight in terms of how routing can be impacted in different Kubernetes environments. Um, and the first is uh, the CNI implementation. You know, uh, every cloud provider uh, has a different CNI implementation that is more, you know, that's compatible with their own um, virtual machine network model. So you want to take that into consideration. Um, the second is, you know, ingress controllers uh, can impact uh, edge service routing in multiple different ways. Um, and then the third is, if you're using uh, service meshes, uh, in, in some case, uh, cases, this can actually override uh, Kube proxy uh, and, and make direct connections for uh, internal service routing between pods. Um, so those are some consider considerations as well uh, to take into account, you know, depending on the different environment that you're running in. So as you can see, uh, Kube's networking has a lot of moving pieces and can get pretty complicated, but hopefully this gives you an overview of uh, things to think about as you get started um, and, and run cluster set and set up cluster networking in your environment. To learn more, visit www.stackbox.com.